She 
Welcome back to the age of jive Where have you been hiding out lately, honey? You can't dress trashy till you spend a lot of money Everybody's talking about the brand, it sounds funny But it's still rock and roll to me What's the matter with the car I'm driving? Can't you tell that it's out of style? Should I get a set of white wall tires? Are you gonna cruise a miracle mile? Nowadays you can't be too sentimental Your best bet's true, baby blue continental Hot funk, cool punk, even if it's old junk it's 
still rock and roll to me. Die Wind TV Show is nie geskik vir sy stiewe kijkers of kinders jonger as 18 jaar. Die merings wat tydens die uitsending gelig word is slechts die van Wimpy, Simon en Stem. Dis is jy ingeskakel op eie risiko. Some men aren't looking for anything logical, like money. They can't be bought, bullied, reasoned or negotiated with. Some men just want to watch the world burn. It's showtime. Hartelijk 
goedenavond en welkom bij nog een Wim TV uitgave. Dit is die twaalfde episode van uh, uh, die Wim TV show. En uh, ja, kan je Ons wat ze vanaf voorbij, die tijd wat ze vanaf voorbij gaan. Ik denk dat die mensen wat wensen die jaar kan maar net voorbij gaan. En uh, just get the year over and done with, guys. Let's just uh, move on to 2021. Where hopefully uh, there will be no more COVID. There will be no more... Hate, hatred in the world and everybody will get along with everyone. I think that's uh, what we're all hoping for in 2021. So hopefully uh, that's where we can get to. Ons het een lekker paneel vanavond vol mense. Ek gaan vannacht die gasten vir julle voorstel. Dan gaan ek vannacht vir julle allemaal een kansie geer het om my luid te sê voordat ons na die band toe gaan. Ons het vir Chris terug, hier so van die, die, ons ou vriend van die Mensenrechte Commissie. How's it Chris? Uh, hoe gaan het vanavond? Is jy ok? Baie dankie Bimpie en uh, uh, van al onze gasten en paneelmensen aan. Ek is pas van Sinekal, ek is in Bloemfontein, ons het baie goed gedoen, maar het is baie blim die deel te wees van die show vanaan. En to all of you, my colleagues there, hy ke se abule elke koers, si silap en amsantje. Ons praat Afrikaans, ons praat Klosa, ons praat Soutu vanaan die show, en ons, maar, maar, maar ons moet net in ons ons praat nie. <laughs> Daar sê, ons gaan uh, ons verwelkom vir Chris terug, ou, uh, bekende hier so by Wim TV, en dan het ons vir uh, Jonathan Rustin van uh, Sadu, uh, Jonathan, weet ek nog nie, is hy al uh, by ons, uh, Jonathan, good evening, welcome, nice to have you on board tonight. Uh, good evening, and goeie naand, and um, uh, thank you for the invitation to the program. Absolutely, wonderful, thanks on, uh, thanks aboard, and uh, thanks for joining us tonight, dan het ons vir uh, Ons het ook die EFF'se Westkaapse leier en uh, Melikaya, good evening and welcome to you as well. Um, I was expecting a red beret, the green is throwing me a bit. I'm, uh, are you a springbok? Are you on the bench for the box? What's happening? <laughs> because they believe in climate change and we need to do much about climate change. That's why the EFF is joining the climate change campaign. <laughs> uh, no, the green is for the a role that was played by Che Guevara, one of the strongest leaders who assisted South Africa to be free okay. uh, from Argentina, who fought side by side with the Cuban revolution, uh, a leader, uh, Fidel Castro. And thanks for having us. And we hope that we'll have a very successful engagement. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining us for the first time. Uh, en dan het ons vir Gabriel Kraus, hy is van die Instituut vir Rasseverhoudings. Gabriel, goeienavond, uh, good evening, Samanyani, how's it going? Goeienavond, baie dankie, baie lekker om sam hier sam met julle te wees, ja. Wel sê, wel dan, jy sê, jy klink amper soos, uh, jy klink Afrikaans, jy het my impres vir die oomlik daar. En dan het nee, ons... Nee, so amper, amper. <laughs> en ons het ook vir Zizo, uh, Vokwana, sy is van uh, Sasku, studentenorganisatie. Uh, good evening um, and welcome aboard as well. Your first time on the show as well. Yes, thank you so much. Can't wait to have a chat with you. En dan het ons ook vir uh, Dr. Uh, Cornei Mulder van die Freids van Plus. Uh, Goeienavond, Dr. Mulder. Hoe gaan het vanavond? Is alles ok daar by jy? Ja, dankie, Vampir, het gaan goed, het is goed om hier te wees, en uh, goed om van jou te hoor, wat dankie. Daar is hy, fantastisch. Ek denk, dit is uh, amper allemaal, so, um, Awiwe, ons het ook vir Awiwe, hy is so met, um, waar is hy stem, jy moet gaan goeie uithaal, wie so, my oor is mos nou nie meer so goed nie, ook van Sasko, so, baie welkom aan boord, Awiwe, welcome to you as well, it's nice to have you on board. I think let's start off, uh, I know there's a couple of people pushed for time before we're going to go to the band. We've got a live band for those people that don't know uh, that's joining us for the first time. Uh, it's a very much a late night live, Saturday night live feel you know, on Vim TV and we have the best band in South Africa with us, but you'll hear from them just now. So I'm going to start off uh, this evening quickly and uh, we're going to go to uh, the EFF and Malakaya. I'm going to have a chat with you quickly. Uh, things that happened in uh, Brackenfell the past, uh, well, the past day, uh, I think we all had a look at, at what happened there and transpired, and I think that's not uh, the South Africa we all hoping and striving for, I hope. Um, can I ask you the question, 
what happened in Brackenfell? Why were you guys there? Let's start off there. What was the reason? What why what prompted the EFF to go to Brackenfell? Uh, uh, we received a complaint from the students of uh, Brackenfell High, who happened to be black students, uh, citing that there was an arrangement that was made there that excluded them. And then upon so receiving that thing, then we uh, instituted some kind of interaction with the school through the deputy chairperson of the province, uh, Nosipo Makamba Boji, who is serving uh, as an alternate member of education portfolio committee uh, at the legislature. And then Nosipo was accompanied by some few fighters, around 20 of them, who would go with her in order for her to go and, and, and interact with the school. In her interaction, she managed to get the principal and the school governing body last week Friday, and then laid the complaint to them. At first, they said they didn't know about the incident. Mm -hmm. And later on, they requested that we give them some time to make some confirmation. Upon so doing, they came back to us together with the chairperson of the school governing body. And then they acknowledged that such an incident took place, but it was a private mm -hmm. function. And then we explained to them that the allegations were that there were some educators, two of them that at that stage were informed of. And then we want them to investigate that kind of racial segregation and exclusion of black people to any kind of thing. You must check these kids, they are used to play together, to sing together, to swim together, to camp <clears throat> together. But when it comes to a party, and then there were some felt that they were left out because they were black. During the interaction, the school asked us to bring more facts uh, to this effect so that they are prepared to investigate the matter. But whilst we were still engaging and the conversation was not concluded, we were informed that the organizational vehicle that the provincial deputy uh, chairperson was traveling with was vandalized outside. And then we had to stop everything. Uh, understanding that we'll come back and have an engagement with the school, and bring the facts that we said the school asked us to do. And then yesterday, we brought the facts, and apparently there were more people that were involved. It's no longer two. There was four of them. So we were there to engage. And in terms of the provincial legislature program, this is a constituency period, last week and this week, where we would interact with constituencies, communities, and as well as public institutions such as departments and everything else. And then we would consolidate a mandate and interact with the legislature to resolve some of the ch challenges. This fell within the ambit of our mandate. So myself as a party leader there, because I was busy with by elections programs last week, I could not be able to be part. And then I accompanied the deputy chairperson to go there. And uh, some fighters at an amount of 30 of them that were there with us, we were there to interact with the school and then they would peacefully demonstrate outside around issues of uh, racism. We were stopped. Melika, can, can, I, can, I, can I butt in here quickly? Can I ask you, when, yes. when you receive a complaint like that from someone, do you investigate that, uh, uh, that complaint? Uh, because I'm going to quote for you from the newspaper. That's, uh, this is a newspaper article that's going to come out tomorrow. Uh, in the Teigeburger, uh, and I've got the article here in front of me. It says, the lady that organized the, uh, the event says the following. She says, um, it was originally, she denies, first of all, she denies that only white matrix were invited. Secondly, she says that uh, um, it was originally an event that was organized because her daughter was in matric, and they even started a WhatsApp group and widely circulated it and it was open to anyone. The only problem was that the venue could only accommodate 100 people and tickets were limited. So the tickets were, had to be sold at the end. Um, it was sold to individuals. A, a black metric learner confirmed that he had indeed received an invitation to the ball and quite a few of them had in, in fact 
uh, received invitations to the board, but declined to go. He spoke on condition of an anonymity, and Teichelberger is in possession of these written comments on WhatsApp. He says, she, a white friend, asked me if I wanted to attend, but I said no, because my parents would not have been able to buy a ticket or hire a suit. Also, me and, my, and some of my other friends had something on that day, so we could not attend. He says, I think what people of color don't understand is that the school didn't plan this event, so I really don't understand why they are going on about it. If the school had planned the event, it would have been understandable to go on about it. That is the comments from, from one of the students in the school. Did you guys investigate that? Do you know about that? Mm, we know one thing that black kids who reported to us, they never received any invitation. They've <clears throat> proven to us that uh, the invitation only, it was even referred to as the white, whites only party. And then we said, we, every story has got two sides. That's why in our interaction with the principal, we didn't say the, to the principal, anybody is guilty of anything. We asked the school and the Department of Education to investigate so that they would bring the facts. If the students who didn't go were wrong, then they would be corrected. If they were offended, unintendedly so, it would be explained to them. That was our purpose of going there. That is why we, we didn't say anything that there is racism or there is no racism. We asked the school and the Department of Education to investigate. That is what we are assaulted for. That is why we are attacked now for asking for an investigation. Okay, Medikaya, I'm going to ask uh, Dr. Mulder. I see he was uh, sitting there shaking his head. I'm going to ask him to, uh, to if uh, Dr. Mulder, it's heard what say Medikaya. Is he made it? Yeah, sir. Yes, thank you, Vampi. I've heard what was said just now. Um, separate from being a politician, I'm also a lawyer. It's very difficult to exp express oneself with regard to what's being alleged, this alleged, this or that, that alleged. Most stories normally have my side, your side, and then the truth. So I hear what is being said in terms of uh, black kids reported that they were not invited, and then the gentleman says, that proved to us. No, it proves nothing. That's one side of the story. There may be other sides to the story as well. You now, what the lady and the children involved said from their side, um, and may speculate in terms of what happened or what did not happen. Um, but unfortunately, the EFF has a history. They've got a history of doing this kind of thing. It's not the first time. I, I hear the colleague now says um, it's constituency period. No, maybe so. There are numerous incidents where the EFF takes it upon themselves to go to people, to confront institutions, and in that process cause conflict. It's not new, not today, it's happened throughout. On the night, one of them, the other, look at the bell. Dr. Mulder. Dr. Mulder, I think we, we're having internet problems uh, on your side. Um, are you back? Can you hear us? I'm back. I'm back. I lost the signal for a minute. No, okay. I say there are numerous examples where the EFF acts in this manner and in a confrontational manner, and then they should not be surprised when other people react. Um, very nice to play holier than thou. They just wanted to interact with the, with the school. They just wanted to get some facts. That is not the history of the EFF. And Melakaya, the, the, uh, if you take into context the, the stuff that's been happening, cynical lately, uh, et cetera, et cetera, uh, we all believe in fair debate and, and uh, uh, due process, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, is there any truth to the allegation that uh, the EFF tends to take matter into their own hands and uh, uh, and might be a bit quick on the draw? You know, uh, what is frustrating is to hear a man of law like Dr. Mulder 
who doesn't understand what affect people and say it's bad for black people to feel otherwise. Because what is happening, the EFF is standing for those who are previously disadvantaged. In a situation of Senegal, we had to stand up there. Immediately after Senegal, we saw predominantly white people marching to parliament to express themselves in a very confrontational manner, in a manner whereby they even utilize old flags to express themselves because they were dissatisfied. Nobody interfered with that because it's a dissatisfaction, people are dissatisfied. So the EFF has got a right whenever they are dissatisfied to express their dissatisfaction. Yeah, I think... Can I continue? Yes, you can. Okay, yes. It can be, it can be illegal for the EFF when we are dissatisfied we express our dissatisfaction. Peaceful dissatisfaction. Like we did yesterday, we did it peacefully. Friday, we did it peacefully. In Senegal, we did it peacefully. It can't be referred to as aggression and uh, provocation. Who has got the right to peacefully demonstrate? White people, they went to uh, union buildings to express their dissatisfaction about farm kids. They were very angry. They express themselves, it's fine. It's within the ambit of South African law and the constitution. We can't say when people gather together and express their dissatisfaction about a certain political matter. We can never live as if we are not in a political uh, 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 sphere. We are in politics. And the EFF is a political party. When people come and express uh, some, uh, some kind of dissatisfaction to us, it's our responsibility to interact. That's why we're there. We took both of office that we will defend the constitution when uh, we have got uh, received allegations that the constitutional rights of black learners were violated we've got the responsibility to go even, and verify that even if the evidence yes. pro uh, proves the other side Manikaya, uh just asking you because uh, as far as uh, i know the investigation was not finished uh when the when the march happened so i'm just asking uh do you accept that people would go to great lengths to protect kids especially you, you're talking about a school where there are 14 and 15 year old kids uh and matriculants who are in their final year who's going who's, who's through he's been through 2020 which is a year from hell i think we can all agree on that uh, COVID-19 <laughs> has robbed these kids of uh, most of their final year of school. Uh, they are under tremendous pressure. They missed out on three months of school, three solid months, and they are expected to perform in a, in a matric exam, uh, end of the year exam. Um, do you accept that uh, this is not con conducive to, in any way, uh this is not to the the this is not for the kids in any way a positive thing that's happening at the moment do you accept that uh what we know my brother is that uh, whenever there is racial uh, allegations uh, uh, labeled we can never say the timing is right or the timing is wrong because racism affects us at all times and it has got far-reaching implications of breaking this nation into pieces. So whenever, but if you would check the root that yeah. Malikaya. Okay, it looks like we have some uh, internet issues. We're going to come back. We're going to see if uh, we can get Malikaya back. And uh, we, we really want to. Sorry, <laughs> Sorry Malikaya. Just give me one second. We're going to go to uh, the music quickly. I don't know what uh, the story is with the internet. Just trying to reset everyone's internet quickly. And then uh, we'll be back on the other side of this. I'm going to give you three minutes to listen to the best band in South Africa. And they always say, you know what? Music uh, unites everyone. So let's see if that can happen tonight. We'll be back right after this. Way we ever could. Now 
Zaterdag 14 november verjaar die baas van die Wim TV plaas en dan gaan ons rock vir Wimpiese birthday bash met die Masters of Rock vertooning saam met Mark Hayes. Kom vier Wimpiese verjaarsdag saam met ons, kry jou kaartjie nou by wimtv.net vir slechts 55 rand. Hier die beloof om een rock and roll ervaring te wees, soos geen ander. Is jij gat vol vir corruptie? There is a broken president in a broken country. Plasmoorde, COVID-19, BLM en racisme. Dan is jij op die rechte plek. Win TV, ongesensor en onbeskaald. Ok, welkom terug, jy is by die Wim TV show, dit is baie baie lekker om jou aan boord te heen, baie dankie vir die inskakel vanavond, lekker debat in die gang, en ek dink ons allemaal op hierdie stadium uh, is nog uh, heel gemakkelijk met mekaar, ek dink nie, daar is mense kwaad vir mekaar nie, en niemand wil mekaar slaan op hierdie stadium nie, ons is nog heel te malak okay en fine. Malakaya, just coming back to you quickly, I know we had internet problems before, so I'm going to ask you quickly, uh, there was no permit granted for... Uh, the march yesterday and there was no permit granted for friday why did you guys decide to go ahead and whilst we're on that subject uh there was a tweet from your leader julius malema in the in the week as well uh that the pretty much the same story as uh cynical where cynical the word attack was used this time uh, the word was uh, uh civil war if i'm not mistaken uh, war declared on, on Brackenfell and its, its residents and businesses. Why is that? Why, why, why are they aggressive? Why want to bring people to their knees? Why not talk about it around a table like we're doing now? You seem like a reasonable person. Uh, we're having a reasonable discussion. Is that not the way to, to handle things? 
Yes. Uh, first of all, we, we didn't match. We were there to picket. The numbers that we brought there was for a picket, a legitimate picket, according to bylaws and as well as the, the, the laws of South Africa. Uh, both Friday and yesterday, we were not much. That is why we came there. And then on the issue of the, the response from the commander in chief, there is nobody that can be happy about such kind of aggression that was shown against black. No reasonable leader of the liberation and the struggle of South African people who were for centuries kept as third class citizens. When that thing comes back where black people would be beaten, black women be beaten by bed or bed, they would be thrown stones by men whom previously they killed our forefathers, they did all sorts of things. They okay. brought to us all those bad memories. So it is for the commander in to express this situation and saying that we have, there is a war that has been declared against black people, it's clear, attacked. And even the premier of the tape said, we must never go to, to Bracken. Can I ask, uh, can I ask you, Malachi, the first stone that was thrown on the video that, uh, that I saw was thrown from uh, the EFF side. Uh, is it okay to retaliate with, with stone throwing then? No, the, the stone was never. You can, I, I, if you'd uh, like enough about the number, oh. before the video where the entire thing started, the stone was never thrown from the EFF. Right? The stone was thrown to the EFF. Okay. Our member okay. was standing, they his beret, they beat him with a baseball bat. They did all funny, foolish things there. It can never be that today we would say it was the EFF that was aggressive. Man we were attacked there. Manikai, we're we gonna. I'm going to go to Zizo quickly. She's been uh, waiting for a while to ask a question. Zizo. Um, so what I just wanted to ask to Dr. I don't know his name, but I found his statements very problematic in that sense that the Melikaya clearly stated that they were there to inquire. And then he claims that EFF has got a tendency of attacking the numbers that EFF has had they were not even enough to attack anyone, but also that in the sense that he needs to understand, because I feel like he's clouded by his privilege, in that as black people, we don't have money to go to lawyers and sue schools or go to lawyers or, or have parents who are educated enough to go to places and ask teachers. Now, by asking the EFF to go fight, for, it's not even fighting for us, it's asking for them to inquire for us. And for the mere fact that there were students who were uncomfortable at the school, that means that the school has a problem. So I don't know who investigated what or who came the article and what that student was was asked but the, the eff didn't go by itself or they didn't literally get the problem from the clouds but they were approached by students of that school so it means that there is a problem at the school and the attack started outside i don't know it feels like this conversation is very it's very skewed the attack was it happened outside white people started the attack and it's always like this i study in Stellenbosch, and whenever in a white area you get a group of black people it's always a problem whether it's 10 of you or 20 people but it's, it's always a problem and why is it that white people when they see a group of black people they feel attacked but when they're walking down the street in their soccer teams or whatever then they 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 they, they it's fine it's fine for them to walk in groups so the problem is that why was there a party that only had white people you know it's Zizel, an exclusive that's, not, that's not true Zizo. that's not true the lady that uh, that organized the party it, and it's in the newspaper i will quote you the newspaper article which i did just now but I will send it to you as well. The lady that organized it, there was a WhatsApp group and everyone was included in that WhatsApp group. So to claim that uh, that was a whites only event is totally not true. It's untrue. It's been proven but as being at untrue. The, at being at the event. Sorry? Who was at the event? Who ended up being there? Was there a black person at the party? It doesn't matter. If you decline the invitation, you decline the invitation. If you if you if I invite you to a party and you decline to come, then you've declined to come. It's as simple as that. There's no racism there. Malakai, so coming, I, coming back. Yeah, sorry. Are we now going to prescribe to people who they should invite to private parties? Is that what you're suggesting? Is that what you're suggesting? You see, I think the lady that spoke just now, I oh, think I she know. directed some of the questions to me. I think she did that. Um, Hello. She asked, 
she asked me why did I say these things that this is the strategy of the EFF? Because it is. It's not new. But where is the given new. Yes, You've experienced this in the past. You've seen this in action throughout. Do you remember two years ago, 2018, at, this, uh, at the Overfall High School in Vereniging up north? What did the EFF do? Was the peaceful we protest? We are not generalize. We're talking about Brackenfell right now and how they approach the school. No, 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 the way but to the whole, can you also give us a chance? Lizarka, it's a murder, not the only I'm in the middle of, yes. Lizarka, we're gonna come the to middle you of talking. You will, you can, you will have a yes. chance. Just now. We'll have a chance just now. Your, you want uh, to have a chance? I just now said they didn't need permission to do that. They were picketing. In terms of the bylaws, you're not allowed to be more than 14. Were you less than 14? No, you were not. You did not have any permission to do that. The tweet of the commander in chief was that for a peaceful intervention. No, it was not. You see, there's a history. Before the EFF was elected to parliament in 2014, what did the EFF say? They said, we are bringing revolution to parliament. Nothing new, we know that. So please don't create the impression of this wonderful, peaceful organization that came there just to investigate. And then once again, we don't have the facts. We don't have all the facts at the moment. We are speculating. But if that was a private party, then they've got the right to do what they've done. You cannot prescribe to people who they should invite to attend a private function. But on the contrary, the information is exactly the opposite. Members of, the, of that school from different racial groups were invited. So it's not correct. The statement being made as if it was a specifically a racist Thanks. thing to exclude black children. That is factually yep. wrong. Thank you, Dr. Can I come in? Thank you, Dr. Mulder. I'm going to give uh, Lizaku a chance quickly. Lizaku, sorry. Uh, it took a while, but we're with you now. I'm listening. <laughs> yeah, thanks, man. Just apologies that they were in this interview and were in the road. No, it's fine. One, I, I, I think quite certainly what must be defined as yesterday's incident was a racial intolerance of South Africans demonstrating their right to organize. There's a constitutional, uh, constitutional court judgment around the right to organize. And it states quite clearly that the right to organize cannot be limited by administrative process or application. It's a right that was fought for and was end through struggle and blood. Uh, and, and if we must define revolution, we may not be AFF, but we're ANC plea. But we do believe that for any African, South African, and black person in South Africa, revolution means the total change of the society that was colonized uh, from from 400 years ago or more, and further deepened into a racial uh, society, racial society called apartheid. A revolution is about transforming that society and building a society of equals, where all South Africans can enjoy a freedom of movement, freedom of expression, freedom of association, freedom to organize themselves against any issue they want to organize themselves. Now, no one should be allowed at any point in time to assault any South African who is organizing themselves to voice out whatever matter they feel they are against, regardless of how you feel strongly against that view. Yours, if you feel other people are violating anything in the constitution of South Africa, yours is to call the South African Police Service. What those people did in Bragenfell was a racist onslaught as the NC Youth League, we will be laying charges against all those seen on those video, video tapes because South Africa is not a South Africa where black people must be limited where they must move. Any South African must be able to move and go and do whatever they please in South Africa as long as it's within the constitutional ambits and the constitutional prescripts of our country. The action that happened today must be condemned by all South Africans and must never be defended to say oh, all of these Flims excuses Peter Melder is telling us here. Yeah, our people were butchered and that is wrong and must be condemned by all South Africans. It must never be allowed that any South African must be allowed to take the law into their own hands and assault any other South African for whatever main reason. Thank you, Lizaku. We got your point. I'm going to go to Jonathan, whose uh, hand was in the air as well. Uh, good evening, uh, Jonathan. Jonathan. <laughs> Jonathan, nice to have you on board, and uh, yeah, you haven't had a time to speak yet, so I'm going to give you the opportunity now. I think you must just unmute yourself there uh, quickly. 
Thank no, you. thank you very much. Uh, I've been listening uh, attentively and I'll drop my hand right now. Yes. <laughs> let, me, let me start off by saying that uh, as Satu, we were alerted about this incident last week and Friday uh, that happened at Brackenfell. And what we had said that uh, as educators, we believe that schools are places of um, building uh, cohesion and um, getting diversity within a school. And we thought that this event was extremely unfortunate. Okay? Unfortunate because it has uh, put a very bad spotlight on Brackenfell High School. Now you quoted from an, an article, which I think will come in the newspaper tomorrow. Great. But if you read the times of, um, of Friday past, uh, one of the organizing parents uh, is saying in the article and speaking um, based on the that that um, it was a private function. Um, it was uh, the, the students who invited their friends uh, to come to this particular um, uh, function. And uh, therefore, those who were there were, were their friends. But the challenge around this particular matter is, and we understand there should be some in-depth investigation, is that if you have any exclusion uh, based on race, whether it's your friends or a party, under the auspice of um, a matric class of Brackenfell High School, it does not bring any unity and coercion at that particular school. It has the contrary. The contrary is that it actually brings about a divisive type of atmosphere and culture to an institution which is an education institution that is supposed to bring about uh, a binding all Brackenfell matriculants together. Whether it's a private party or not, under the auspices of it being a matric farewell, does leave a bitter taste. So what we are saying as the union is that we need to have a, an intense investigation and today we said the human rights commission should investigate this matter and we are glad that uh, the commissioner uh, chris nissen is on uh, the show today to say let's investigate this but we are deeply disappointed uh, in the mec and premier's comments today to say that like dr mold is saying and i'm not critiquing you dr mold they don't know each other there's the private party but the fact of the matter is if it's school related we are supposed to have inclusivity within the school. If we do not have that, then we are going to have a polar which we have seen today. And, and we are, as the teachers union, deeply um, unhappy about this particular events. It has the effect on the Brackenfell community. It has the effect on the parent community of Brackenfell, which may be divided now. And, uh, and the events uh, in terms of the assaults and the, uh, the, the intolerance around um, freedom of protest, etc., no matter from who it comes, because it does start to impact on your constitutional right, uh, which is something at the sacrosanct to all of us. Uh, thank you very much uh, for the opportunity. Thank you very much. I think uh, at this stage it's a, it's a matter, uh, it's... Um yeah, I'm just going to do that. I think at the moment it's a matter of he said, she said, and uh, this one says this and this one says that. According to the newspaper article that's in front of me, uh, the invitation was in, was, uh, in fact invited to everyone. Um, and there was uh, people of color was invited. There was even a WhatsApp group. So I think we should move, al we should move along from that point because um, that, that, that argument hasn't been investigated. We don't know who's telling the truth or who's not telling the truth. I want to go to um, um, Chris quickly. Chris, you were mentioned. Uh, I'll be where I'm going to come to you now. If you give me one second, I just want to bring Chris in here because uh, the Human Rights Commission was mentioned. Uh, Chris, um, vertel for my sê vir my van die mense recht te kom hierdie se se kant af hoe sien julle hierdie saak want ek sien daar is 'n die mense regte kommissie het nou weer uh, het al reeds daar is 'n mense regte kommissie saak en dink jy nie dis 'n bietjie prematuur nie ek wil vir jou dit vra uh, ek en jy verstaan mekaar so ek kan met jou ek kan met jou ja, regheid ja. praat kan dink jy nie die mense regte kommissie het 'n eban net 'n bed getrek hier dalkie nee glad nie en glad nie, en kan ek net sê, 
En als je niet mind, dan zijn we onze Afrikaans, maar onze, onze collega's daar. Nooit per se. Maar Tosa en Zulu praat, zo ik zal nog niet Tosa praat. Als je aan de voeten tekst is Tosa naar mijn land, is zo tekst is je kumsha. Zo ik ga Engels praat, nee? No, 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 no. But let me tell you first, can I just make a few comments and then I get into your answer? The first thing is, you know, Vimpi, I never thought, I never thought in my whole life, the time I was in prison, when I was tortured, with only one dream, a dream of a South Africa, in the words of Martin Luther King, if we all will be together. What happened yesterday cannot in no way be condoned or be excused whatsoever. People have got the right to protest. Even if it's those AFF people, all the parents, they were all in numbers there and so on. So, but I'm not going to go in there. There are political parties here. I don't know how to get involved in the politics of this thing. The Human Rights Commission is indeed investigating this, but we're investigating this with a view of two things. The one thing is to mediate and bring a transformation and diversity management training to staff and engage with those for, with, with with, with, with the learners. What we have in the Western Cape, but also in the rest of South Africa, is that learners post-94 all came together into schools. And remember there was a time when the school's policy was on hair, how your hair should look like, and that and all those kind of things. We have not prepared the school environment mm -hmm. for the transformation. And therefore, what we have is that we just lump people together And remember, the school environment where learners are, are a reflection of the broader society. And I can tell you now that at the moment, I've been involved on the Cape Flats with a number of schools, and it's not only schools within the, 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 the former white areas or what area, but also in the colored areas, also in the African areas. We need to deal with the issue of diversity and transformation and how we build a learner's learners and to respect each other and each culture, its language and so on, and how we put everything together. I think the education departments have failed school principals and governing bodies by putting into, pro, into, into place a process in which we can deal with diversity and transformation. I can tell you now, where I said, I've been to many schools and many principals have been talking to me And I've been assisting them across the Western Cape, but also not the Western Cape, Eastern Cape, you name it, where El, in El Dorado Park, where I've been working, although I'm in Bloemfontein, I'm just on Senegal, where we've been dealing with the transformation and diversity program. I am I'm, I'm appealing to everybody that we all stand together. Yes, we cannot run away from the past, and we cannot run away from the fact that we have a rainbow nation dream that has been deferred because there's no tolerance and people have gone into the, to, to their to their own space and so on. And what we need is that we need to come together and talk about these things. We, we must be honest and brutal with one another. There is racism in South Africa and how do we deal with it? Can we please, how do we deal uh, with it? But not, but not deal with it in the way that we have to go and fight in the streets but let's sit around the table. Yeah, I was just about to say, let's uh, let's uh, lay off on the brutality for a while. Um, Abriwe, sorry, thanks for your patience. I know you've been uh, wanting to ask a question. And then, uh, Malakaya, is it okay? Do you have still do you still have five or ten minutes for us, or do you have to go? I know you've got another another interview as well. So if it's okay, then I'm going to mm. ask Abriwe to ask a question quickly, and then we're going to come back to you, and then uh, Gabriel will be coming to you because I want to know how all of this uh, is helping the Institute for Race Relations in South Africa. So, um, Avivwe, you're welcome. I'm listening to you. Um, thank you so much. Um, I think a lot has been said on this platform. And initially, when I was invited to be part of the speakers here, I thought it would be more of a discussion rather than people just focusing on an apparent side of the story but regardless of that i think it is also very important to note that i think everyone's been in, everyone's been allowed to to uh, voice their opinion so i'm allowing you now to do yours can i continue yes you can 
Oh, so I was saying um, racism does not have to be direct. Sometimes in particular settings, there are instances of racism that come in many forms, but have the undertone of racism. So I think going forward as the investigation is pending, our duty as um, a student organization and from the stand view of the Progressive Youth Alliance would be for us to investigate as to why the particular black students were not keen to attend the farewell because one mentioned that it was terms of finances because it can happen where racism is enforced through financial exclusion because of the political and financial standing. Secondly, for it to be viewed as a political tactic of the EFF, I think that's an insult to the strides that have been made to coordinate coordinate a single system of edu education in South Africa. So I think moving forward, also especially for the matriculants who are writing exams in a pandemic, what mental health support systems will be implemented to support the children that have been affected by this? Because we can have a whole media stance on this, but at the end of the day, we have students in that school. What are we doing to make sure that the students feel like they belong to the school and they're not just being used as a political front? Thank okay. You. Thank you very much, Abiwe, and we take your point. Minakaya, uh, I'm going to come to you. Do you have five more minutes for us, or do you need to go? You you still, I think you're muted, so I'm going to ask you to unmute you. There you go. Do, do you have five more minutes for us, Minakaya? Okay, perfect. Um, can I ask you the way forward? This has now happened. We understand that um, the whole situation was, uh, uh, it was an unpleasant one for everyone involved, but it's happened. I think uh, we need to put the, the, uh, the learners first. We need to put uh, the students who's, who's busy writing exams first. What is the way, what is the way forward from the EFF side, uh, point of view? What's happening next? We, we still have got to zoom in to understand the exact facts. I'm very much worried with uh, uh, Dr. Malda, who is a, a law person, whom would dismiss facts or any kind of allegations before they are even investigated and get a report. I was of the strongest view that he would be able to come here and say, let us all agree that there is a need for investigation. And upon receiving an investigation report, we can't rely on media statements because media doesn't investigate. They, they interview people and they take it from there and then they make their own reports. There was no investigation of this kind. And then the, as the EFF, we must uh, zoom into that school. There's serious racism that is happening there. Since 1994 till today, there's never been, it was confirmed today by the MEC of education, there's never been a single colored or African educator in that school since 1994, a public school that Dr. Malda is defending at all costs to say it is right, black people excluded at all costs. Don't put yes. words in my mouth. Keep it up. Uh, in terms of ensuring that we interact meaningfully, civil, and justifiably so. It can never be that we would be asked when we've got 30 picketers outside, that why are you there? There was more than 400 white people there. Dr. Malt is not worried about them. They have a right, COVID regulations, uh, bylaws, or any other thing. They've got the right to be there, except black people. You sound like so, the Democrats in the United States. So that is where the challenge The problem that we have in South Africa is to forgive people who have never asked for forgiveness. We have gone through transition and accepted an apology of people who have never opened their mouth and they apologized to us. We made peace with them. I'm going to bring in Gabriel here. Yeah, Gabriel, you've been uh, quiet for a long time. Uh, Gabriel, tell me from a race institute uh, point of view, uh, how do you see uh, the whole happenings in, in Brockenfell and how do you see the conversation tonight? Uh, thank you so much again. So I think that it's very important to contextualize any allegation of racism in this country. within the lived experience, as we like to say, of most South Africans. Day-to-day -day life in South Africa is an experience for the vast majority of people of trial, sometimes of error, but overwhelmingly of goodwill towards one another. 
I know that because of my life. I'm a journalist, so part of my life is going around various parts of the country, suburban areas, urban areas, rural areas. Also, I know this because the Institute of Race Relations consistently over the last decade has done field surveys demographically representative across race, across class, across creed, and we find the overwhelming majority of South Africans are fully on board with the non-racial program of judging one another by the content of their character and not by the color of their skin. One of the more germane findings that we have is we asked South Africans, would you like your students to be taught by a teacher that's the same race as you, or do you just want the best person for the job? And 90% plus of South Africans, black, white, Indian, and colored, don't give a damn what color their teacher is, to speak to an earlier point, they just want the best person for the job. That's non-racialism. That's meritocracy. We have 90% plus of the country that knows that we need to work together if we're going to go forward. So does that mean there's no racism in this country? Absolutely not. There's racism in this country. There are overt black nationalists in this country. There are overt white supremacists in this country. And there are racists of other kinds too. For sure, there are exceptions, but the general rule is of mutual respect. So that's how I approach any situation like this. I don't get it overblown. Uh, we've heard about centuries of uh, black versus white uh, tax. Uh, we've heard that our people were butchered. I, I, you know, butchery is, go to a butchery. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm pretty close to one here. It's, it's a very different story when there's, uh, when there's death. Um, as black people, we don't have money for lawyers. That's kind of a hilarious comment to be making in the presence of an EFF member. Uh, Julius Malema and Lozi, of course they have money for lawyers. They're very rich black people in this country. Statistically, we know that uh, wealth uh, has, has changed its patterns of ownership. In 1994, 90% 90 plus of South African wealth sat in white hands. According to StatsSA's latest data, 30% of income has been going to white people since 2015. The largest single share of income goes to the black top 10%. So we live in a new country. We live in a country where no one is actually surprised to see rich black people or poor white people. We live in a country where no one's surprised by the idea that we have to work together on the content of our color, of our character, not of our color. To get back to schooling, just as a, a sort of a very important point, investigation is key. I had this experience in 2018 at the start of the year when Schreiser Reinecke became headline news across the country for two weeks and it was headline news around the world. And the accusation there was that there was racial segregation at Schreiser Reinecke's grade R entry level first day of school experience. And that came from a photograph where there were 12 white students sitting at one table and four black students sitting at another table. And the EFF was there and the ANC was there and the DA were there, all condemning. It was a, it was a cross party thing, all condemning that teacher for being racist. None of them even knew her name. The wrong teacher was fired. MECs from Gauteng went through. It was a, it was a, it was a, it was a mess. And I stayed in Schweizer Reinecke for a week and I sat with parents who had to go pick up their students, five-year-old children, while rocks were being thrown over their heads, while the fence to the school was being broken down. They were petrified. The kids were traumatized. It wasn't very nice. And I tried to find the truth and it took me a very long time to do it. And what I found eventually to start with, which no one else had published, was the actual name of the teacher, Elsa B. Olafir. And I found student parents who had had the, the actual parent whose child had about whom the original complaint had, had been made retracted it said, I'm sorry, this was such a terrible misunderstanding. I spoke to parents, black parents who had their students in her class the previous year who were petrified, but found after a while that they had to speak out because they said, this woman has done more for my child than anyone outside of my family. I respect her. She's helped give extra English lessons after class, extra Afrikaans lessons. She's helped me personally. I spoke, they showed me photos on WhatsApp so that I could get some concrete evidence. Doing the investigation is important. It shouldn't be up to journalists. I agree. There should be, there should be a tendency in South Africa for us to look at the successes that we've had. 
we have actually built in a country where outside of the media and political elite, it's very normal. When you go to a shopping mall or a supermarket or a restaurant or a, a, a sports event or a music event, it's very normal for South Africans of multiple races to be hanging out together and to respect each other. It's an unusual thing for there to be an allegedly racist incident. And the first thing that we should do is remember that even if it is racist, it's bad, it's unusual. And secondly, to investigate it thoroughly, I encourage more investigation wholeheartedly. And, and since I see Kaya of the Human Rights Commission raise his hand. I must say, I was very disappointed. I believe a lot in what the Human Rights Commission often does, but I was very disappointed to see what their statement was on this. And I'm gonna read it. And I'm not saying he made it, but it does come from the commission. The statement says, I quote directly, the Human Rights Commission is shocked to learn that in this day and age, a racially segregated private event was held for matric learners from the school. Now we've heard uh, Kai and I say they want to go and investigate. We've heard our SACO speakers here say they, they want uh, the Human Rights Commission to go and investigate. How can you conclude we are shocked to learn that in this day and age a racially segregated private event was held for matric learners from the school? You conclude that first, then you go and investigate. There is a problem in this country of wanting to bring the hammer down of judgment and then to go and find the evidence. And it's back to front and, and we can't afford it from a from you know there's there's a bigger picture to to tell about what the the socio-economic impact of all of this is but i'll leave it at that gabriel well done i'm gonna uh, thanks for, uh, yeah, for I, your I comments to I'm, gonna, okay, yes, I, I'm, I'm gonna give you the opportunity chris i just want to say uh luzaku i know you've got your hand in the air as well so i'm gonna go to chris uh to respond to that uh, that statement that uh, gabriel made and then i'm gonna come to you and then uh, Melika, i'm yeah. gonna come back to you Ja, nee, Gabriel, ek gedoog, jy is die engel van goeie nies, soos in, in, in die Liebe Testament. Maar ek nee, ek slaat met... nie een engel nie, ek is, ek is nee, net een mens. Ek, ek kan sien, jy is die engel nie, want ek gehoor jy, ek en jy gaan verskil met een paar voet, maar ek en jy moet eendag koffie saam drink, so ons kan praat oor hier goed. Je, first of all, let me say to you, and to you, all of you colleagues, and I, I'm, I don't want to dabble in politics, I've done politics in my life, I know where I come from. However, I live every day in a community. I've just come from Seneca with a wonderful meeting after three, four weeks. Bumpy, you remember when you had me on? Remember. I told you I'm going to Seneca. We we are going to do the things. We are, and I'm very happy with what we've done. And I must say, while we're talking now, we condemn with the all the condemnation deserve what happened in Henneman. And we pray for our sister or for our member that is still in hospital. We cannot, one murder is one murder too many. And today we have brought people together and continue to do that. And now will be coming, going back to Enemal, to, to, to Seneca. But I live a lived reality. I really live a lived reality throughout the country. I visit many places, many provinces. I see the poverty, I see the racism. And yes, we must not close our eyes to what the reality is in this country. All I'm saying is, let us pull together, let's work together. The second thing on, on the statement, let me say on the statement, it's, it's, it's unfortunate that, um, that Gary Bill didn't, didn't listen to my statements this morning or my statement yesterday in the Cape Times and all my statements on community radios this morning where I spoke about our intervention, that we will do the investigation, but that's normal for the Human Rights Commission to do that our intervention, of course. We, and if he continues that statement, he's selective, he doesn't continue that statement. The statement continues by saying, it was issued by a national office, it says the alleged, the alleged racism, the alleged. But he also did not hear what I said. We are going there, as I normally work, to say, how can we mediate? How can we bring people together? And how can we continue? If he comes with me, I'll show him on the Cape Plus and everywhere, where racism is rife in our, in, our, in our place. Therefore, I still maintain the Western Cape Education Department, like the Eastern Cape, you will recall, Wimpy, I don't know if you know this, but sometime back two years ago, there was an MEC for social development in the Eastern Cape that had a youth camp, and she said, only Africans, we challenged her. You see, so it's not only about this in, 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 in this area. We must challenge racism wherever we find it. And the Human Rights Absolutely. Commission, we are not above critique. Critique us, but please let us open our eyes that in the South Africa, as we speak, what happened in that school mirrors in society. If you have listened today, 
to Stephen Grote's program of how people from Brackenfell was phoning in all the time complaining. Let us not run away from the fact there is no. racism. And how do we it deal is. with racism? But and how can we it? come together? No, and how can we do that? How can we find sustainable programs to deal with racism and deal with it in a way that we build social cohesion and build a South African of which we all can be part of and say, how do we build South Africa? And we can differ with one another. And I'm the first but, person I said in Senegal, I'll defend your right to differ from me, your right to have a different opinion, I'll defend that right. But let us continue to work together and use this opportunity presented in Brackenfell to assist. But the one thing I'm asking, please let us not disturb this matriculance by whoever. Let them go and write the, the, and let them not be traumatized. Let them write the exam. But let us deal with the issue of racism. Malikaya, is that going to happen? Are you going to allow the students to write the exams in peace and uh, uh, have a fair chance at uh, at uh, securing a, a career for themselves for the rest of their lives? We we have never disturbed uh, the program of, of of education, the academic program there. But Malikaya, if, we you, if you, sorry to butt in, but if you. If you outside of school, there's stun grenades being thrown. There's uh, uh, there's uh, racial slurs being thrown around. Do you not think that that is disturbing? And people, if you if you have somebody outside of the school grounds and he's exposing himself to the school kids, it's happening outside the school school grounds, but the kids are still seeing it. Uh, do you not think that uh, the the kids are inside the school ground, but they can hear and see what's happening on the outside? And they have to write exams in these conditions. Yes, the kids can be exposed because uh, the, the 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 understanding is that the allegations is that they are going through traumatic experiences there. The denialism that is happening here is a serious injustice to black people, and the challenge that we are having is a situation whereby we expect those who have never gone through racial discrimination to understand how is it to be excluded they will be here in this platform all forms of justification why we must be tolerant to racial ex uh, exclusion but if it will be told if it's, it's proven, if it's proven Malikaya, that that was not the case there is no such a, a, a thing i've just made a typical example here i said from that school till today there has never been any person of color who is a teacher at that school. What does that tell you? Gabriel? How do our interact with people who are grossly untransformed and who are not prepared to transform? Not even the system, it's just to have people who can speak their language whenever they would want to express themselves. Gabriel? Yeah, so, so I do think you have to look at the practicalities. I mean, we have extreme uh, racially race-based law uh, in the Western Cape, there was a, a, a coloured person who applied for promotion who was denied that because they said the quota for colours was filled. Uh, you need to find a black person. You had a white police officer who applied for promotion and they kept the post vacant for three years. That case eventually went to the Constitutional Court uh, and the court ruled that it's, it's better to actually not have a policeman than it is to promote someone who's perfectly qualified other than the fact that they're white. So again, let's not pretend that we don't know how South Africa works. We've had extreme race-based law for a long time. Uh, schools are highly incentivized, public schools are highly incentivized to promote and elect uh, educators and particularly administrators of color. When that doesn't happen, it's unless you show in a particular uh, interview otherwise, it's because of supply and demand. It's because of the teachers that are willing to work in the area. It's because of the teachers that are capable of carrying the syllabus in the language of question. It's, it's a matter of practicality. There's this thing that the EFF likes to do of saying that they speak for black people. They only have 10% of the votes and uh, based on my projections, I think they'll have 5% of the votes in the next election. Mashaba will eat their lunch. Not only do the EFF not speak for black people, they don't speak about the experience that most black people have had, or most white people, or most Indians, or most coloreds. We live in a country whose laws mandate to the highest possible degree the promotion of persons of color. Where that doesn't happen, it's, 
It cannot I don't be. want to say universally, but I want to say it's standardly the case that it is a matter of practicality. And parents want it that way. Most black parents would rather have black kids go to that school. If that school only has white teachers, you should ask those black parents why they're sending their teachers to the school. Maybe it's because they're not a racist like you. Maybe it's because they don't care about the race of the teachers. They care about the quality of the education that their children are receiving. A lot of South Africans don't really care about race nearly as much as the EFF. And by the way, don't assume just because I'm white that I haven't been a victim of discrimination. I've been at EFF rallies, for example. I was at Sienekal, for example. I was in Schweizer Reinecke, for example. I've I went to EFF rallies in Soweto and lots of EFF members, most EFF members were very generous towards me, very kind towards me. But some EFF members said, I went to Omlungo, what are you doing here? When I Bulala. I was at an EFF rally at Newcastle where I heard uh, Lucky Shabalala, an EFF member singing, Panzi, I'm a Bunu Panzi. I said, why are you here? Si Abonga Matu is inside the court because he has confessed to killing Glenn and Vida Rafferty, the Newcastle farm murder case. He said, we are here to defend the black child. Even whatever the case is, we are here to defend the black child. So there are EFF members that will explicitly defend farm murderers. There are EFF members that are so obsessed with race that they will put black people down by champion expropriation without compensation, a policy that is sure to immiserate the, the vast majority of unemployed poor people in this country are black. And they're going to go down if that policy goes through. But the EFF doesn't care because what it does care about is window dressing, Gucci, okay. a nice lifestyle, and singing a, a, a narrative of perpetual victimhood. Melikaya? The land to shall return. And that, that's it. Whether you like it or you don't, we'll pass that law and the land shall return. We'll take our land and we'll take it back. If you and win, black if you people win will get election. poorer. Okay. I go. Th thanks, Monica. Oh, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask uh, final comments from everyone. Uh, Luzaku, I been, know you've been waiting for a while. Uh, final <laughs> comment from you? Uh, you must just unmute yourself. Lizaki, you must yes, I'm with you. I think one uh, in building a South Africa where the constitution can truly live and racialism can be practically experienced. As citizens, as parents, some of us here independent, we should frown upon any incident where there's exclusion of any kind of anyone in South Africa. Secondly, where no, where rights of any South Africans are violated, including the right to demonstrate or organize, should implore upon us a moral conviction to say something wrong was done. Further, an investigation would be necessary from independent uh, investigative organs or institutions of state, so as to properly get to the root of what happened and after that, so as to bring proper re remedies to the problems that exist. Furthermore, I think I'm com completely perturbed by the incidents that the questions of land reform and rest restitution are being defined as populist. Uh, I must also state here that it's not only the EFF that has taken a position on land. The ANC has got a position on the land question. And it believes that South Africans all should have equal access and rights to ownership, control, and participation in land ownership. So I think it's very wrong that that can be dismissed as populism or be dismissed as, as whatever the last speaker just said. Such statements must be condemned because they speak against the spirit of the Constitution, which is about creating equal citizens of South Africa, which can all enjoy the liberties, the rights, the freedoms, the resources of the country equal. So in moving forward, more dialogue is needed so that we can all understand the problems of our, our people because quite clearly we're not speaking enough to each other or we are speaking but not looking deep into the problems that face our people. Because it cannot be wrong to say black people do not have the means to, uh, to afford lawyers. Legal fees are quite expensive. If you looked at, at the, uh, the income gaps between blacks and whites in society, must look at those things honestly and fairly and say, do they really have the financial means? And not just define black people using the EFF as a definition of black people. That's wrong. 
for all South Africans, we must all be looked at as South Africans before we look at the fact that we are what political party, what student movement, or what worker union or formation we come from. We must look at each other as South Africans first. And if we are truly serious about building a South Africa of equals, where we can all live in peace, harmony, and joy, we must be able to have the moral conviction and ethical stamina to put ourselves in the shoes of others before we make comments about anyone in South Africa without being properly informed about their background, their social reality, and their, and their social economic st standing, and therefore try to bring, together, to bring each other together on the path of reconstructing our country and developing it to a country of equals, and ultimately ensure that everyone in South Africa can live in conditions of peace and prosperity. Thank you, Lizaku. Thank you very much, and thanks. Uh, I'm glad to see you home safely. So, um, yeah, thanks very much for joining us tonight. I'm going to ask um, final comments, uh, Jonathan. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'm not going to comment on all the other peripheral issues. Uh, maybe that's an invitation for another night uh, yes. to speak about employment equity and uh, uh, filling of jobs and transformation of schools. But from an education point of view, I think we must say that uh, schools have a, indeed a role uh, to actually bring about change, bring about uh, peace amongst everybody. Uh, let uh, us all work together and we teach values of acceptance, diversity within our institutions. Now, just to perhaps correct our colleague uh, Malikaya at uh, Brackenfell, uh, there's one so-called colored teacher in the school and one called so-called colored teacher in the governing body post. But that, that indicates that the school has not had any form of transformation. If you have a big black population, I think it is important for you to actually have huge diversity in the school. So therefore, part of the program for Brackenfell High School is to see how do we install values of, um, of acceptance change and tolerance within that. The event is unfortunate. I mean, we have said that if uh, the parents have heard that owed the parents who were, uh, the children who were not there an apology. Move forward, build the unity of the school, and let's take it uh, forward in the crisis of COVID. Uh, we think that um, an in-depth investigation must uh, be done. Bumpy, you have raised uh, the, the statement of one of the parents. I have responded to one of the other statements the parents have given. So let's find out the truth in terms of the matter. Please. But in terms of the classes at the... Um, outside the school it has done huge damage uh, to all of us uh, in South Africa, in Cape Town, in Brackenfell, and that was totally unaccepted, you know. We have to be uh, tolerant so that everybody has the right to protest. Whether you're protesting a, a wrong thing or a right thing, is not, that's not the judgment. It's about you expressing your view about uh, a particular incident, but we cannot have any forms of violence from any side in these incidents. Uh, the mm -hmm. videos we've seen quite horrific and we want to condemn them with the strongest contempt. And thank you for the invitation and we hope we'll be able to resolve the matter. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. I'm going to ask, um, uh, can I ask Zizo, can you, uh, final statement from you as well? Um, all I can say is basically, um, <laughs> There's a lot of work that needs to be done and um, I'm just disappointed at how this conversation went because people were very defensive of, of, of questions to are you going to allow students to write as if the piece is within their hands when they were also attacked, you know? So it's like a matter of that we, we are ignoring the fact that something went down, why people attacked the EFF people. And like now you're asking why would the EFF allow the students to, to write because it was a fight outside. Why can't we also ask the other side that will they be able to give the peace? Because like right now what's happening is that people are, com are coming with excuses as to what is happening in the school. People are coming with excuses. Oh, Gabriel was totally out of order. Even that's what white people like to do is that, oh, I was also discriminated. For the mere fact that you can count the times that you were discriminated, it shows white privilege because in my position right now, 
I've become so new and numb to other issues because it's happened to me so many times. So where now you feel like because you were attacked two or three times, it makes you valid. And it's not even about you. The situation is not about you. And it's about the students. And it's about the school as a whole. Because if we don't look at transformation and we don't try and transform and we're engaging with people who don't want to listen or don't want to get what the fundamental problem is, then we have a problem. You know, as a journalist, you're saying that why would parents send students to that school? If you understand stood why black people because I was a student from Kailicha and I went to a school in Ronobosch and it was the reason why I went there it was not because Ronobosch is bigger than Kailicha it was because of the resources that were there yes they had more resources they had less smaller classes now you as a journalist you're going to think because the white school is much better and black people prefer that blah 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 because based on because it has white people you see those issues are white people don't want to listen Whenever you come with facts, they want to come to those facts and say, no, but this thing happens to us too. No, but this and this and that. It's very, it's a problem. And it's, it's hard to solve a problem with people who don't want to actually listen to us or people who don't want to, um, you know, engage with issues. Because whenever you talk about racism with white people, they always get uncomfortable. I don't know why, because for them, it doesn't even affect them that much. To us, it's our everyday lived These experiences. Are, uh, but like, Have you applied for a job and not uh, got the job because you're black ever in your life? Listen, I'm, I'm still a student, but I've, I've applied to places in residences that I was never accepted because of You're my blackness. You're not answering the question. Because... But that question I'm, is problematic. I'm a student, I've never applied for a job. Really that fair. question is problematic. I've that question is extremely problematic. Not problematic, it's spot on. Well, she... No, no, no. That question is extremely problematic. <laughs> and dealing with the issue of Bragenfell here. Let's resolve the issue of Dragonfell. If you want to ask us about South African issues in terms of race relations, then open another session so we can exactly, debate these things. Exactly. So we can bring you to issues of privilege as well. Okay. How black people are excluded each, okay. each and we're every bringing, day from ownership, from means of production, the, from mainstream participation in the economy. Okay. So let's be, let's please be humble to each other and respect yes. each other, not undermine each other. So the, the issue at hand was Brockenfell. So that was moved from there. It was moved by Zizel. So that's why I'm bringing her back to the point. That is not the I point never of moved tonight's it. discussion. I never moved it. Gabriel moved a long time ago. I never moved it. Mm. But that is not he the point. Of... The Thank you. He spoke about mm. Thanks, school. Okay. I'm Aviva. Now that I've never applied for a job because I am a student. I'm but the host is intolerant of our views here. Yeah. This is a dialogue. As a host, you must be tolerant of our views. Don't differ to our views to the extent to show bias in your interest of what the outcome of the discussion must be. You invited us here to have a session and a dialogue about what happened in exactly, what happened Zizou. in Brackenfield. Exactly. How are we responding to some of the speakers? Because I feel what you're doing to Zizo is actually wrong. Okay. They're intimidating the speaker. Allow the speaker to conclude. The you have given her a chance to, to conclude her okay. closing response. Can you not intimidate the speaker, please? Thank you, Lizzo. We're tolerant of each other's views here. We're all calm. We're respecting each other. Can we please continue in that fashion to respect one another and not undermine each other's intelligence? And can we please just stick to the point then? Um, Gabriel, can, can we have final comments from you as well? I was supposed to speak after Zizo, though. Yes, are we where? I'm going to come to you now. I'm just going to, I saw uh, Gabriel nod his head, so I'm going to ask him and then I'm coming to you. And then but Dr. Mulder and then Melikaya. All right, in that order. Uh, Gabriel. Okay, great. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. I think it's good to hear uh, a diversity of views, a different way of uh, thinking about this particular problem and one another. Um, I'll leave aside generalizations about white people and stick to Brack and Foe. I, I reiterate that there should be an investigation. It's not that complicated. If a WhatsApp was sent to all the students, it should be a matter of minutes to establish that fact and uh, then you know I want to reiterate someone said that uh, if it was the case that there's been a false allegation of racism then there should be apologies absolutely if it's the case that there was a genuine allegation of racism there should be apologies absolutely when people make mistakes it's a simple thing uh, it's a universal thing children know small children know when you do a wrong thing you must say sorry and as grown-ups, we must remember that fact that the small children already know. We must learn from those students and we must learn from the students that just want to get back and do their work. One word that I haven't heard and that I wish I would hear when talking about education in South Africa is excellence. This country has the potential to be excellent. We have so much excellence already and we need to grow that. Uh, we grow that by focusing on solutions-oriented thinking. We, we do that by growing our skills and we do that by working flipping hard. 
So uh, I want to say congratulations, first and foremost, to the Brackenfell students that are going to do well in their matric exams because they're letting this thing fly over their heads and they're putting their nose to the grindstone and they know what really counts. And I hope that adults can learn from them. Thank you, Gabriel. Are we where? Um, thank you. I think a lot has been said that I'm not going to repeat, but the most important point that we should take, and I, I would like to caution the people that are here, is to not let the political standing of the EFF allow us to look over a very important issue. Because if there are allegations of racism at Brackenfell, then that needs to be attended. Whether it was the ANC, it was EFF, it was an individual who came forward does not make the issue any less immoral. Secondly, I think we also need to continue the conversation between racialization and racism. Because what I'm picking up here, people tend to mix racism with racialization. And that's a very, those are two very distinct concepts that people need to familiarize themselves with. Thirdly, and as my closing point, we as SASCO and the PIA will continue to extend support to all those who are affected and doing so we will reaffirm the right to collect, picket and organize. Thank you. Thank you, Obiwe. Thank you for your time tonight. I'm going to go to uh, Chris. Chris, uh, thanks again for joining us tonight and uh, final comments from you. Yeah, let me add my voice to all the matriculants across the country, but particularly those in the rural areas and the far flung areas that have absolutely no resources and trying to do their best. And we pray that they will do their best so that we uplift our community. Education can free us from poverty. Secondly, I want to say that um, let the Sartakun Human Rights Commission allow, allow the Sartakun Human Rights Commission to do the investigation. We do it without fear or favor. We independent, impartial. That is who we are and what we are. Yes, some people don't see it, like you've seen the, the statement of a party today, but I'm not going to comment on that. But um, what we are saying, allow us to do investigation. However, as we believe what, what is alleged to happen there, if it is true or not true, however we see it across the province, that there is systemic issues. And, and in, in, terms of you, in, in terms of the schools where learners are confronted on a daily basis, as the Southern Human Rights Commission, we will play a role in building tolerance, social cohesion, and, and taking on racism. But lastly, we cannot go as South Africans forward if we want to hide things. We must sit around it, and that's why, thank you, Vimpi. What you've done tonight was good so we can air the things, we can talk, we can open up, and I hope South Africans would have seen this so that they also look in their own hearts and say, what role do I as individual South Africans play in South Africa? We are here. There's, we, nobody's going nowhere. So we have to live together and we have to work together, but we must end the scourge of racism in our society. Thank you, Chris. Thank have you. a wonderful evening. Nice having you on board again. Malakaya, uh, final words, final thoughts from your side. And um, yeah, please, let's uh, end off on a good note. <laughs> no, uh, as the EFF, uh, we are saying that we... We are not ashamed and uh, regret having interacted with this uh, issue of national importance, which talks direct to the opening of old wounds that might result in a serious uh, regret of the entire nation. Transformation is something, something that is needed and we're all subjected to. We understand that you can never transform untransformed minds. We have forgiven people who are not prepared to be forgiven. They are prepared. You know, abusers, they will always repeat what they normally do because it is in their genes to abuse. We do not expect those who have never been abused to understand what abuse is. That is why they would come here and laugh and say, if you, if, if you can take your kids to another school, you, you, you must do so because they have never been subjected to that. And I understand that black people must always, even young ones, they must go through such kind of traumatic experience. And it's a laughing stock. Women were assaulted literally there with baseball bats. Firearms were discharged in the middle of a crowd. A man who discharged a firearm four times was released on a warning. 
That's the kind of South Africa we're living in. We're going back to that school to investigate that matter. We will never leave it un unattended. Dr. They Mulder. can say this or Brackenfeld that we're going back to that school. Dr. Mulder? Yes, I guess the answer then is that the children will not be left in peace to write their exam. I think we should be clear about that. So thank you for the opportunity. I think it's important that we discuss these issues. Um, I would like to agree with Luzuku when he said we should talk to one another more often. Um, that's a pity. I remember after 1993, we had discussions amongst different communities quite often. And at some stage that suddenly just stopped and there's no more this kind of interaction, which is a pity. Um, I think with all due respect that the arguments of Gabriel was absolutely on, on the spot. Um, it was, uh, most of the, what he said was absolutely correct. I'm convinced that the vast majority of South Africans from different communities are people that are prepared to live in harmony and in peace with one another. They've got no problem whatsoever. But there are individuals who are trying to cause problems and cause havoc in society. And I've got a problem with that. Last point. Tonight is not an opportunity to cross swords with the, with the Human Rights Commission. Chris is absolutely correct. The, the institution that should investigate this should be the Human Rights Commission. But then with all due respect, the Human Rights Commission should be in such a position that they are respected by all South Africans in terms of what their mandate is. And we don't have to discuss that tonight. We've had a different experience with the Commission over time. Others may have had the same uh, experience. But let's leave it there and let's see where this goes. But in the end, it's about the children. It's about the future of those children. And my appeal would be allow them to write their exams in the best interest of that community. And let's get the facts on the table before we judge. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you very much. Uh, everyone, thanks very much for joining us. Lezaku, I see you already, already in bed. I wish I could join. I wish, well, I won't, don't wish I could join you there, but I wish I was on there as well. Uh, so thank you very much, Gabriel. <laughs> okay, I completely wrong. You guys must have a wonderful evening. Thanks step, very much. Yes. Yeah, it's different. I'll say no, it's not crazy. I'll say it's not crazy. It's a big bang. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. It's come on, Owens. You'll say it's not crazy. It's not for the right thing. But it's a bit gevaarlijk. Next time, next time. Thanks to everyone. It was really interesting. And thanks for seeing it. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Eric. Thanks, guys. Thanks Have a good music. evening. Thanks for joining us and uh, stay safe and stay COVID free. We'll we'll speak again if it's okay with you guys. We'll we'll continue the debate and uh, that's what it's all about. Thank you very much. Okay, so also, you know, that was uh, that was a long, interesting gesprek. I think, come on, we're going to go music. We're going to go back and we Simon and Stem the opportunity to get something to say. Um, I think it was. Um, it was what did what did the kilo worth? Yeah, I think. But what did kilo? What is your for the kilo was more still? I said you had to wait till you reach. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the the. And then was by. The party got it. My so big storm geslagen. And the party got it. I think. Do you know what I think? After come from now. I think I'm all well stuck in Ukraine. But weer iets het het gewijs van nooit of dus hoe dit van mij weer komt dat. Ons is niet te ver van mekaar of nie. Die gemiddelde ouwel, hoor kom ons verstaan mekaar, dit is ok dat ons verskil met mekaar, dit is ok dat dinge nie, ons gaan saamstem nie. Um, allemaal soek een kans vir, jy weet net, free, fair en, en, en die opportunity wat, wat, wat Zuid-Afrika kan skep vir ons. En ek dink dit is die idee wat ek gekry het, hier en daar het elkeen maar sy steekje ingekry, ja. um, Hmm. wat hy sêke maar wou. Um, maar dit is, is die emotie van die, van die van onderwerp. Van die gesprek sêke. Ja, en, en, ja. en ek het ook ge gehou van die paneel vanavond. Daar was, hmm. daar was allemaal was daar. Daar was studenten gewees, daar was uh, ouwer, jy weet, uh, journaliste. En dis ek om ek die vraag gevraag het vir, uh, was het, uh, uh, vir Zizo, um, van, het jy dit al van die ander kant af experience? Want ek denk allemaal praat van hulle, hulle, hulle experience, point of view of of hulle jou. point of view, Dit wat hulle beleef in hulle hmm. leven. En die vraag is, uh, heel terecht, het jy dit al van die ander kant afgesien? En ek het nie, uh, ek wou nie van te daar. Ja, nee, sy is nog ons vuist die geweest. Ja, dit, sy was ja. bekeer, en ek dink ja. het is een kwestie van, precies waarvoor sy betlui, 
wil skuldig sy ons. Ja. Of, 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 of dan nou veralgemeen somme alle wit mense. En, maar dit is wel voor sy betleid, sy verwacht die, dit is ook, dit is die enigste ding wat so bykie van my blurred was, as ek het so kan sê, waar jy sê, waar jy so, jy, jy wil uh, uh, opportunity hee om een opinion te hee, en jy weet nie hoe dit voel om gemarginaliseerd te word, of uh, daar teen jy opgete word, ten opzichte van jou veld leer nie, mm. en toe jy dit aan die kant omvra, toe is daar offense. Ja, ek weet so, nie so lekker nie. Dit is eenvoudig, ek, ek denk die, die ding wat ons allemaal hier uit met vat, vanavond, is dat die Brackenfell studie is nie klaar nie. Ja, nee, 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 nee. Ek denk, uh, dit was duidelik uit, uit uh, Melikaia se, se afscheid woorde, dat uh, ons gaan terug. Um, en ek denk dit het die potentieel om uh, baie, dit, dit het die potentieel om baie lelike ding te word. En, uh, ja, jy, jy weet, toxic is die woord. Toxic is die woord, is die gedachte wat by my opkom, dit is die, as ek daar aan denk, dan, dan, dan raak ek nervous. Uh, vir dit wat kan gebeur. Kijk, en ek denk die politie het een baie groot rol hier so te speel. Ja. En uh, die politie gaan hierdie saak baie, baie mooi hmm. moet hanteer. Want hierdie is een kruidvat en het wacht om te ontplof. En ek kan vir jou nou al sê, hierdie is nie sene kom nie. Hierdie is nie hmm. sene kom nie. Um, en ek, ek, ek wil amper vir jou sê, um, Ek weet nie of die politie gaan genoeg Ja, Vimpe, die groot issue hier is, is natuurlijk is, uh, school is kinders. En, en kinders en familie en ja, uh, ek het self een uh, 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 kind in die laarschool en my eerste twee keer video's begin sien um, gisterochtend oor die geweld. Hmm. Het, uh, my eerste instinct was om, om dadelijk en ek het in my kar geklim en dadelijk school te geraai, want dit is net jou, jy wil net seker ja, maak, jy wil seker maak alles is, uh, jy weet, jou kind en al die kinders is veilig. So, Kijk, so ek dink, dit was die meeste van die ouders, dit is ook om al daar was, om seker te maak. Uh, as, as, as ons terugkom, dan, dan vraag ons die vraag wat nie gevraag is nie. En wat vir my belangrike vraag is, die persoon wat hierdie saak gaan aanhandig maak het, of onder die soekle geplaas het, wat dalk ook, ek weet nie, want ek weet nie wat die, die feit is. Mm, ja. Ek weet wat die feit is, wat in die korant bericht, wat morgen in die korant gaan verskyn, volgens die berug, die dame wat die, wat die, wat die um, funksie gereel het, het gesê, allemaal was, was uitgenooi, daar was een WhatsApp groep gestig, bla bla bla. Die persoon wat hierdie, wat hierdie vonkie gevat het, en die gras in die brand gesteek het, en nou sit die veldbrand wat niemand kan keer. Ja. Ek wonder, wat sy of haar reaksie nou is. En was dit die moeite waard, omdat jy dalk nie een uitnodiging gekry het na een functie te nie? Was dit, al hierdie dit, die moeite waard vir jou? Miskien is dit nie eerst dit as nie. Daar, hmm. As daar nou een burgeroorlog uitbreek hier so, as gevolg van dit mense verloor in die levens, was dit vir jou die moeite waard? Dit is die vraag. Kom ons gaan nou die beind toe.
november beteken gewoonlik dat kerstfeestmuziek begin speel in die winkels. Daar is echter nog goeie nieuws hier in november. Die Boltong sessies gaan voort om vir jou die beste vermaak te bring in die gemak van jou eie huis. Op zaterdag 7 november maak Cunning Brad sy debiet op die Boltong sessies. En op 14 november gaan ons raak saam met Mark Hayes. Op 21 november bring Nicholas Lau vir ons een huldeblik aan Elvis Presley. En op 28 november sal jy saam met die talentvolle bokspan kan keir wanneer ons Outdoor Warehouse tydloos Rock Rewind uitsaai. Kry jou maandkaarkie nou by wimtv.net vir slechts 200 rand en geniet toegang tot 4 baltong sessies en 4 wimtv shows. These are the best tasting burgers money can buy. 100% pure beef and at 160 grams, they are bigger than most. Our master grillers grill our burgers on grills made to grill burgers for that unmistakable 350 degree flame seared flavor. It's a South African legend. The steak, ribs and burger people. Spur, people with a taste for life. Jy kyk na die Wim TV show met Wimpy, Simon en Stem. Mense maar weet wat maak. Wat sê, wat een lang aand. Ek wil, ons het die vraag gevra net voor die breek, en ek gaan het weer vra, die persoon wat nou, wat die EFF gekontak het, en dit is my vraag, is die EFF nou Batman, en ek wou dit eindelijk vir my kaie gevra het, is hulle Batman, dat hulle moet, hulle moet intree elke keer, vir elke enkele, weet jy, as jy vir elke, as jy gaan 2000 mense stuur of gaan pik het of gaan demonstratie hou vir elke liewe geval waar daar meningsverskil is of waar iemand ongelukkig is. Met ander woorde, ek kan gaan en cry wolf en hier kom die wolfvanger elke keer en hy kom beredder hier of het nou reg is en of het verkeerd is. Ek ben, en dit is die probleem wat begin het vir my met kliks. Dit is toegelaat. Pimpie, dit het al voor dit begin. Nee, ek wil terug gaan na wat ons Engel Gabriel gesê het, oor Swaise Reineke School, 2018, hy was daar, nee, en wat toe, die foto, amal weet van die foto, en wat daar gebeur het, amal was daar klippe gegooi, die property was damaged, alles, nee, toe het hy moos nou gaan investigate, en hy toe achter die kap van die bel gekom, amal is mal weer die juffrou, dit was toe eindelijk nie, so groot, dit was nie, dit was glad nie, geen racisme wat so even nie, so, en ek wonder, of die ding met Brakkeval hoorskool, jy weet, daar word nou iemand, iemand word nou, het nou na die EFF toe gegaan, en gekla, of dit nie dolk net iemand is, wat net nie die WhatsApp gekryd nie, of net nie op haar groep was, of, dat het eerder so iets is, of iemand was dolk nie, die geld gehad het, om die 500 rand te betaal, en dit kan enig iemand, nie, nie, maar dit kan ook nie, wat, maar eerder dit, as wat het doelbewus, ja, 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 dit is alles, racisme was, so, ja, maar onthou nou, en hy sal een bericht, en weer eens is berichte van die korant, en ons weet nie dit nie, maar al was, borge gereel, vir kinders wat het nie kan bekostig nie, so daar was, weet, as jy nie kan bekostig nie, steek jou hand op, of ek weet, ek nie, maar, miskien is dit ook maar bykie embarrassing, dalk, ek weet nie, ek kan dit dalk verstaan, 100%. There's always a lot more that can, that, with the case, look, I'll say it right, I'd write, no one should have pulled a punch, no one should have done it, you shouldn't have, but coulda, woulda, shoulda. The problem is, is that, like, there's emotions involved. Look, all of us with kids here, you know what I mean, like, like a kid gets bullied at school, and, and you're like, we must turn the other cheek, and uh, to be absolutely honest, and I shouldn't be admitting it on TV, but I told my son to hit the sucker back, yeah. you know, and it's wrong of me to do it, fine, but or was it, you know, like, they didn't yeah, yeah, taught yeah. the kid a lesson, and now they're friends, and for me, in this situation, the, the problem comes, like, with, with the panel, for example, there's a lot of, like, poor me's on that panel as well, and there's a lot of, like, I got treated bad, therefore, I want everyone to know about how bad I'm treated, I mean, the, the lady that speaks very, very fast, with apparently no privilege, <laughs> with the nice sunglasses and the lovely clothes Around and her hair done better than mine and like and that sort of thing you know like it, she she's like throwing stones man gabriel's got lots to say and he's been in the situation but all of a sudden it's like i'm sorry you don't know anything about pain and it ain't true you know like we've all been everyone has been through some form of some problem or some form of prejudice at some form at some point in their life and mm. it goes down to like it goes up to excuse me leadership either you everyone on the panel wants to be a leader 
And almost everyone on that panel shouldn't be allowed to be a leader because, my God, there was a few facts thrown away there, and I, I'm going to use facts in the, in the informal. Quote, because there was some stuff being said that, that just was not true. But the like, whole thing, that, that proves the whole point. Because Malakaya was saying the whole time they were, there's not been one single uh, yeah. and, uh, teacher of color, which is completely not true. Yeah. And it was yeah. uh, the, the uh, Jonathan from uh, yeah. Satu uh, brought that to his attention. And, and Joey also uh, sent us a, a screenshot of um, uh, one lady. of the teachers that, that's the definitely colored at uh, Brock and Fell High School. Yeah. So once again, it's, uh, there's, the facts are wrong there. Yeah. So the facts <laughs> for the function yeah. might be wrong as well. Mm. So Absolutely. The problem comes is this. is like we, well, I've got a real serious question to ask, and maybe we can answer it next week. But like, why go to the EFF to complain? Exactly. Why don't you just go to the principal or just a teacher or, or someone or, or a parent and say, like, hey, what's up with that? You know, and There could very well be lots of racism going on. You'd, we don't know. You know. We're not really the investigative <laughs> team. <laughs> Bloed in die iemand water gereik nie. Iemand het gekla, soos ek die ding, of al was die story in die korant. Iemand het na die korant toe gegaan, of um, dis hoe ek dit het, ek, ek weet nie. Of uh, hoe die EFF involved geraak, is een goeie, dit is actually a good question. Die bloed gereik. This lady, or person, or man, or whatever it is, uh, they, they, they want to be, like, they want to be the main deal. They want to be, I went and I told them, you see what I did. Mm. That's wanting to be a leader, but not really being a leader. Look at the catastrophe that it's caused. Now. For it's me, it's a no. question. You know what? Now, this whole thing and in everything, even the aftermath where we are now, gaan alles vir my oor intensie. Was dit die mensense intensie om rastestisch te wees? Was dit die mense wat gesê, hulle is uitgenooi na die partij kiet, hulle kon het nie maak nie. Was dit hulle intensie om Racistisch te sê, oor jy, dit is net klom wit kinders, ons gaan nie, gaan nie. Well, like, probably What was not. Inti- no, no, definitely not. Yeah. I want to put my head on a block saying the intentions from whatever was never to, to cause harm. I don't know, I'll stir a little bit and say prob- probably not, but could have been. Absolutely, it could, could have always, been a bunch of I, white guys I, I, like me I going like, no, I still believe no, in no. that middle 80% that we, would, that we keep hmm. talking about saying, you know what, I said, I had a, an in-depth discussion this, uh, this afternoon with an African guy, he happens to work with me, um, about something similar. And, um, and we, in 99% of the time, we agree about, the, in fact, you know what, we agreed about the important things. It was the small things, you know what, the, the, mm. the, the, the tomato sauce or mm. mustard that you eat with your pop. That's mm. the, 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 literally the small things yeah. that was, in fact, probably Preference. Do you remember that great anything? ad that used to be on TV? For, I can't remember what whiskey it was. It was a brandy. And it was like mid Asia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a fantastic yeah, 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 yeah. It was just like they're speaking Whether completely different water. languages, but somehow. So, no, 80% of us get along, just want to get a good life, good education. Weer eens, kom terug naar die punt toe. Die punt is, daar was a problem. Een van die ouders het gebelg gevoel, of, of gevoel, yep. where is my kind is excluded, he saw en jy, ek verstaan het as a ouwer myself, ek het self oor die probleem gesit verlede jaar, ek het gevoel my kind word uh, exclude uit uh, provinciale rugby uit, vir redes buiten sy beheer, en ek was ook kwaad, jy word kwaad as a ouwer, so ek kan het verstaan, die ouwer het ook gevoel waar die so my kind is, hy, maar wat is die rechte route om te volg? Is die rechte route hardlip pers toe, of hardlip na die EFF toe, of gaan na jou beheerlichaam toe, rapporteer het aan jou beheerlichaam, of gaan eerst naar die schoolwerf toe, dan rapporteer die schoolwerf toe aan die beheerlichaam, en dan volg je die ambtelijke kanale. Yeah, there are steps hoe kom, take, yeah. kom het so ver gaan om een politieke partij uh, te involve, wat jij weet voor je heilige ziel, hoe is al, hier is die situasie, jy het gesien wat dit is hier in gebeur, jy weet die, die, uh, politieke, Suid- die politieke toestand in Zuid-Afrika, of die situasie in Zuid-Afrika, is intolerant at best, op die oomlik, maar in Zuid-Afrika. Ja, Allemaal is in een kruidvat. The, hoe kom, the, the hoe problem, kom, die, die route volg, die ouwer met die vraag. They, they provoke, let's just call it what yeah. it is. Like they, they have been known, and seen, and proven, and found guilty in court, mm. to, to provoke. They arrive in big numbers, they make a big scene, so now someone punched someone else. Fair enough, the person on the Brockenfell side should not have done that, we get it. But the problem is, it's the history of it from there on out. You poke a dog all the time, and the dog eventually bites you. 
You know what I mean? Like, are you blaming yeah. the dog or are you yeah. blaming the idiot that kept poking the dog ma, the whole time? Ma, ma, just precies that. Is the, is the, is, okay, I don't know what happened and someone had it on the floor and so on, but do you think that people are not so full of that bully, right? Yeah. Mm. yeah. yeah. Like, that people are going to say, you know what, so moor, I will for the rest stay and yeah. I will wait for her to come. Not by us, Koli. He said it, on the, he yeah. said it on, on, this, on the call. He said, we will continue to do what mm. we do. We will mm. continue to do this. In translation, we will continue to mm. provoke. We will always stand and then do that. Justin, you have a say? That's what I want to say. Like, I mean, the biggest problem with this is misunderstanding. It is the cause of the most fight. Misinformation. The mm. was not done. And misunderstanding. Mm. So, uh, I mean, uh, by voorbeeld, wat hulle gesê het, dat daar was nog nie een uh, uh, onderwijzer van kleer by die skoolie. Ek was in Brakeveld hoor. Um, die onderhoof, daar het meneer Koopman, was een kleerling. So, ek mean, ek dink, ja. mens moet net hulle feite recht kry, voordat hulle, you know, full charge gaan. En, jy gee en nog muziek, jy gee nog muziek by Brakeveld hoor. Ja. Ervaar jy enige vorm van uh, racisme, wat sê daar was? Voel jy, voel jy, jy soos... Uh, Glad nie. Ek het van my kant af, ek mean, die muziekdepartement is, ons is en die departement daar in die hoekie, ek het, ek het eerlijk waar nog nooit het ervaar nie. So, okay. so hier is my vraag vir jou, meneer, die ouwer, wat hierdie saak so ver gevat het, het jou huiswerk gedoen. Is dit nodig om op hierdie punt te kom waar ons nou is? Is jy gelukkig? My vraag vir jou. Oké. Okay. Dit gaan vir ons bring met die prank. Nee, 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 nee wacht, ek wil net vir jou iets sê net vannacht. Maak net seker, na, nooi my nou weer nie na een van jou partytjes nie. <laughs> ek sê net vir jou nou hier op die record. Hou jy nou weer een partijkie en ek is nie op hy. WhatsApp groep, SMS groep, ons het, 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 ons Ek het stem sal... Wat is Malakai as vir hom? Het ons om op wat sê? Ons sal ophou om te braai op ons eie. Het is fijn, sê my. Maar jy is so bezig om te gym dees, dan is kom jy by jou uit. Owens, ek het vond soos die van een treat is, hoor. Sê ek het allemaal hou van treats, ja? Ja. So laas week het ons die Frank Drucker's Hot Souls Challenge gedoen. En ek het eindelijk die main man, die kingpin, gaan opspoor, wat hy sou sy maak vir Frank Drucker's. Johnny Hexburg is sy naam. En dan houd baie gaan opspoor. Nou, hierdie wat ek het, dit is so'n bykie van een lucky pack. Is dit die active ingredient? So ek sê, dit is so'n bykie van een lucky pack. So, ja, vir die wat gewillig is, en ek kom eens kyk hoe gaan het. So, ja, ek denk ons allemaal. Ek sal doen as jy het doen. So, hallo, ek kan nie. Ek het so'n moer so'n hoofd, wat ek bedoel met die lucky pack het vibe is, dat van hulle is sier, van hulle is lekker soet, van hulle is... Chili? Ook en warm. Oh, so dat is een variety. So, dit is een variety. Okay. Hulle like lekker drop. Hier jy weet, jy gaan nie chili in, jy gaan nie chili in trek, nee? Hey, ja, ja ons, um, ek is sweet, op een so voorwaarde, jy moet hom klaar maak, wat ook al jy krij, jy moet hom slik, jy moet hom klaar. So, Kan, geen jo. bakkie daar vir jou. Simon, het jy jou emmerkie daar? Producers, dit is die prank, hoop ek. Nee, dit is die pre-prank, nee. dit is soos die okay, starter. Ok, so hier is soos jellykies en, en dit is gemeng yeah. daarin. Ja, dit is, vat dit is lucky pack. Dan as jy chili vat en jy krij een sweet en dan... Dan dilute hy om. Ek gaf jylle wacht, na. Of anders er om. Ja, wait, so you're saying, you're saying that... Just flick with your owner. The non-Afrikaans folk, they can't... Yes, yes. So there might be chili in this, but there might be. But there might be like a sour one or like a... Sweet one. This is our Oh, I create, I create chili. It's like, yeah, like the frogs in Harry Potter. Like, it's exactly built on that concept, yeah. This is... I want to in. Let's go with in. But you have to be Just like... You know. Chew it or just swallow it? All two. Both. Whoa, 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 Ja, ons weet. Sê my doe het is, alreeds. So, Lelou, hierdie is jou manier om, en ek kan ek net gaan gaan iets sê. Kan ons dit goodbye sê vir Wimpy at least? Hierdie gaan my einde beteken, jylle weet het, ek gaan dit nie. Moe nie die selfe fout maak as ons vriend nie, waar leer jou polis? Sê net gauw vir WhatsApp my gauw. My vriendkie, my polis is... Moe nie sê nie. Ja, so ek wil net sê vir die rekord, my vrou het van ons, die wil ek sê denken, vergeet vandag. Wat? Ja. I'm just 
mentioning the fact. <coughs> ik join jullie. Lieve moeder mens. Oké. Okay. Yes, het is allemaal omgeëerd. Het is allemaal omgeëerd. Ja, ja, ja. ja. Oké, okay. kan ik willen inlaten op iets? Hoe dat? Ik het, ik het, ja, alles is allemaal spannend. Yeah. <laughs> ja. Carolina, Carolina Reaper zijn we. Dus ik hoop dat ik hem alles gaat drinken. Ik is jammer. Jezus, bro. Maar ik ga gewoon iets moeten grijpen om te drinken van die. Die gaan niet vliegen. Oké, okay, maar dit was niet die prank niet. Nee. <laughs> Wat? Nee, dat was in die prank. Hoe is het nou? Zo. Hier zo zit. Aangezien Simon nou top fix is. Och, yes. En amper kwalificeren als een bokser. Jij is met, uh, Simon is bezig met de box. Wat dat? Oh, wow. Ja, ja Dank je. Ja. Dank je dat je vrouw dit is. Dat is ook Gaan eens kijken wie die meeste push-ups kan doen tussen Simon, Stem, Justin. En Mark. Kom een voor een naar die area voor die band en doen zoveel push-ups als wat jij kan in één minuut. So ek en Stanley gaan tel. Lekker. Uh, yes, so, daar is hy. Oh, we're all fired up now. Sir. Ja. Ja. Ek vind een goeie correction. Daar is hy. Die leeser van die game mag nie die woorde verander nie. Dis my show. Ek kan doen wat ek wil. Oké. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Ik is stand hier. Ik denk niet jij kan push ups doen. Ik zie wel dat die timer is al recht. Ik is bang als ik het probeer, dan ga ik in mijn broek shorts. Hoe ga je zo vol met mijn kleren en mijn hemd? Mijn vriendje, je gaat niet jouw hemd heel te mal uitdragen. Oh, ik zou nou niet dat niet. Moet jij niet bij boor gekregen van t-shirts of wat? Nee, maar als ze wel een sakina. Hoe is zo'n eigen bezig om wit te branden? Ik ben counting. Ik ben on fire. Ik like, ben on fire. Yeah. You don't, you don't have to actually chew it. Ik yes, swallowed it and everything. Yeah. Ik kan niet echt gaan verloren, want ik is moe gedoen. Ik okay, heb vandaag veel lucht verteld hoeveel het ik al gedoen. Oké, ik al. Is hij recht? Stijn niet. Kijk, wie is de eerste? Ja, die hele, allemaal zo. Ja, allemaal gelijk. Ja, allemaal gelijk. Ja, anders gaan we onze stem gaan een trend onder doen. Oké, okay, mijn man is heel gereed. Het iemand de timer. Oké, okay. op je eigen tijd, ready, set, go. Ons het een clear voorloper. Ja, maar jij moet zakje boos met de duim van die grond wees. Ja, kom aan Simon. Jij raak je bikey, dus niet eens. Stem is los aan de voor. Ja, nee, wat ver. <laughs> <laughs> o, ons is nou eens bij 24 secondes. Simon, al wat jy bedoen is, hou aan, nee, gaan hulle nou voorbij. 30 secondes lef, 30 secondes lef. Maak jy... <laughs> Dat is on fire. Dat is nu 42 seconden. Nee, je ja. hebt nog 10 seconden. Daar 12 seconden zo. Ja, ik. Ach, brand op. Simon niet gaan opgooien, niet toch? Zij, je me niet. Well done, Justin. Justin is a clear winner for the Lord. Right, this is your own prank. <laughs> right, you know, this is for all the show for the Lord. Um, yeah, I, th I think it is, uh, that was an interesting thing. You know, the issue is not for me. Uh, come on, it is not for the next week. We have to talk about it. We have to talk about it. Hopelijk in ons volgende week uitkom bij Donald Trump. Ik wil zo so graag met Donald Trump praat. 
Um, maar ja, hopelijk gaan we volgende week nog bij komen. Maar en dankie eens dat jullie weer deel was van die show vanavond. Waar is ons zanger? Ik uh, weet niet. <laughs> Maak je oké, okay, my friend? Ons gaan uitspeel met die band. Wel, sien we nie eens om het kom uithaal met die sanger. <laughs> thanks jylle, dankie dat jylle deel was van die show. Weer eens, thanks vir die crew. Dankie vir jou by die huis wat gekyk het. En as jy die show later kyk, waai dankie vir jou. En dan daar volgende week, ons hou die situasie dop in Brakkevel. Hoopelik is dit nie vir ons volgende week nodig om weer al oor te praat he. We want to talk about Trump. Dankie jylle. Wat speel ons? My birthday party. Jy moet jou bultong sessie kaartjie kry. Sam met Mark in die band. Gaan lekker weet. Each morning I get up I tell him Can't bear to stand on my feet Take a look in the mirror and I cry Lord, what you doing to me? Spend all my years in believing you I just can't get no relief Lord, somebody, who's somebody Can anybody find me? Somebody love Yeah I work hard every day of my life I work till I ache my bones At the end of the day I take all my heart and pay all on my own I go down on my knees and I start to pray Till the tears run down from my eyes Lord, somebody, ooh, somebody Can anybody find me? Somebody love Oh, he was hard every day I try I'm going crazy Boy, you got a lot of water in your brain But you got no common sense You got nobody left to be leaving Hey, hey, Keep losing my beats I'm okay, I'm alright I'm gonna face no defeat Just gotta get out of this prison cell One day I'm gonna be free Love Find me somebody to love Somebody to love, find me 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 somebody to love, somebody, 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 find me somebody, find me somebody to love, in it.
Baie dankie dat jy deel is van die Wim TV Show. Vir meer kontroversiële gesprekke, maak seker jy kry jou kaartje vir volgende week's uitsending by wimtv.net.